Welcome to The Ovation Show, where we're discussing the healthcare crisis in America. We're bringing partners, colleagues, clients, and business owners together to discuss solutions and innovations that are bringing a higher quality of care to employees while reducing their out-of-pocket costs, but also reducing the employer costs and giving them more transparency and control. Uh, we're live in the Work Innovators studio today, where Work Innovators is amplifying the voice of business here at the VentureX in Castle Hills at The Realm. And today I've got in a great friend of mine and longtime friend um, who specializes in the uh, in the voluntary benefits, enhanced benefits, supplemental benefits space, uh, Heath Oaks, who is the new CEO of National Family Care Life Insurance. So Heath, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me, man. Look forward to being on here. It's just, I mean, it's more just us sitting around a bar chatting like we always do, right? <laughs> I think last time, yeah, lunch at Capitol Grill yeah. was a good time. Yeah. Um, you know, we've been friends. I was trying to think today and I'm going, man, how long at least 10 years. 10 years at least because yeah. I've known Joe Fernandez, which is how I met you yeah. at Colonial uh, back, you know, I think it's been 14 years. I was yeah. gauging because he, first year I knew him, I had my, my son. And so he was at my son's first birthday party. Oh, so I know awesome. it's been at least 14 years with him. So yeah. it's probably at least a decade with you. Yeah. So, uh, but I, we met through Colonial. Yep. So, you know, and that's yeah, that supplemental voluntary space. Um, just tell me, how, no one gets into the insurance industry on purpose usually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just happens. So yeah. let's just kind of go. I mean, you're, cause you're young. I mean, you're yeah. still young. You were really young then. How, yeah, yeah. How'd you end up in working for working with Colonial? What happened? You know, the biggest key uh, really came about from just wanting to make money. And I wasn't the brightest kid like, a, you know, I was I was a kid that was more street smart. And I got out of school, high school, barely. And um, it was where I'm from out in East Texas. You go to the oil field really to make money, you know, and, and college wasn't going to be a good fit for me. So um, I started selling cars. And I mean, I'd never made 10 grand in a year. Right. Uh, my first month selling cars, I made 10 grand. I mean, I was redneck rich, baby. I mean, I was the <laughs> typical 18-year-old redneck that made some money, F-250 jacked up, the side-by-side -side that I spent too much money on, you name it, right? Uh, then went broke again because I realized sales is not something that always just rides high. And um, But I realized I didn't want to do that because I was like, you, you're just going to work forever so hard. And it was like the people who were making more just saw their family less than all of those things. And I said, I, I don't want to be that, you know? And and uh, everything I read about wealth and everything was residual income and insurance was at the top of a list of the easiest mm -hmm. entry point to to try and get it. Um, now, you and I both know most people who get into it don't make it, overwhelming yeah. majority. Um, but to me, I saw it as a chance, right? Um, and so I started that, Banker's Life and Casualty. Um, I'll never forget when they interviewed me, interviewed me, you know. Yep. <laughs> obviously offered me the job. They offer everybody the job. Um, and I called my brother going, they offered me the job on the spot. I was so good. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, didn't realize that. I had the same experience with Ashlack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah, it's like, man, they think I'm, I'm even qualified. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they offered on the spot, you know? <laughs> and um, obviously, you go through those up and downs at 18, 19, and starting in the senior citizen market was not the smartest choice. Um, but I did pretty well there. And then I started my own insurance agency, and then – um, doing a lot of individual health. I did all a lot of individual health, all individual stuff. And that was right before the Obamacare. And when that change happened, I realized I was only a year in. Mm -hmm. I'm not big enough to weather that whatever this, I know there's something coming. And because back then you could make 30% commissions on individual yeah. health policies, which is crazy to think about now. Um, and so, uh, but I transitioned to Colonial when I saw that coming. Um, actually was looking at Aflac and then somebody told me about Colonial and um, the business to business stuff I had never done. And, you know, I did that over 13, 14 years ago, started that track record up to where, you know, I am now I was there for 13 years, I believe it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, 13 years. And yeah, I mean, when I met you, you were already in a leadership position Yeah, and, you know, one of the things that always amazed me when I met you, besides the fact, you know, I mean, I'm older than you and seeing, wow, this guy's young. And, but you were actually, what I loved is you were training and you were growing people and helping them build their dreams. And you were just this great sales trainer. Mm -hmm. I mean, not only recruiter, but I, you know, I mean, just everything I saw, um, you know, where did you get that from? I mean, how did you become, I mean, you, just your own sales experience and a lot of reading or watching things or how did you become such a great sales trainer? And you know, what was funny was I, I wasn't at first because um, honestly, at sales, I was probably pretty natural at sales. Sales was something that I was selling at eight, nine years old. I was the kid who made money somehow, some way selling plants door to door, you name it. So the problem I had though was I got screwed over in the insurance business in the beginning. 
you know, we, you and I both know there's a lot of bad, bad actors in the yeah. business. They take advantage of a lot of people. Coming your background too yeah. and mine, we know those, right? Um, and I had to rebound when I started the others. And, and I kind of was like, man, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to get to this point where they were, that's not going to happen to people, but they can have the shot. Because I started doing well and realizing how much it was changing my life, that how much that opportunity could happen. Um, Scott Wintry and I were, were good partners. And Scott was the more detailed um you know, laid out person who followed systematic and I was the definitely the wing it, the <laughs> inspiration, the whatever, right? But like get along so well. Yeah, I definitely did not do anything by the book. Scott was to a T. And I'll never forget that and he had been trying to tell me forever that I needed to be more regiment. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, dude. I can sell Austin Eskimo. Why would I want to do that? And got on an appointment, there was a new agent and they were really struggling, you know, and they need that paycheck. And so I went in there going, I'm about to close this thing down for them. I'm going to lock them up. I'm going to get them some money. And um, um, went in there and I used every single objection overcoming I'd ever learned in the sales yeah. business, right? You name it. It was the, I pulled out all stops and we closed it, walked out of there and I'm like, yes, we're high five. And I'm like so pumped about to put money in their pocket. They quit that night. Send me an email and quit. And said that that was something they never thought they would be able to do. And I went, huh. And that's when it hit me with, if I want to be a great salesperson, I can just do what I'm doing. But if I want to create other people the opportunity in this business that it's afforded me, I have to create repeatable processes that anybody and everybody can do mm -hmm. even when it comes down to the spot of something like that if i pull it all out where i got somebody sitting there going how many years that took me to get there they're sitting there intimidated going i'm if that's what it takes then i'm not gonna be able to do that right mm -hmm. that hit me the hardest and that's where the repeatable trainable get to a spot of going coach something that can be recoached and retaught not just winging it on a personality or a specific person because then you're building something that's just built on you versus built on processes. Well, I think the processes work too. And that's, you know, I even look now at my career and where it's gone. You know, I came into, I had an insurance license. I worked for uh, a financial firm and I was marketing. I was a glorified marketer. Yeah. I'm calling on people worth 500 million, a billion dollars, trying to set meetings for our principals. And they, it was funny you talk about the, the, the objections. We had we had loops, they were loops. So they would object, they always object. They were always the same objections. And we had loops and we just go through the loops until we got the appointment set and it yeah. worked really well and that helped get me ready for the next phase the next phase which was you know starting off going with aflac and the same thing i get any objections i was able to loop them and i wasn't scared of anybody because yeah like, i just talked to carl icon on the phone and got through his reception and, and had a meeting and set a meeting with him i can get the plumber down the street with 10 employees yes you know and so that that does help me but it was also the structure that aflac gave me in the beginning of make this many calls a day Yep. Set this many appointments, you will get this, this, and this. Yep. And it took me about a year, year and a half to even get that going where I was mm -hmm. consistent. And then all of a sudden it was like a faucet turned on. And I think I opened 43 new case, 43 new cases that year. Yep. I was like top account opener in the country. Yep. And suddenly my career took off. Yep. And then, you know, like you, paradigm shift hit when ACA and I was either going to get out of the business. Yep. Because I just didn't know it was coming. But I took the other, which is what most of my colleagues were doing. They were bailing or fighting ACA. Yep. I said, you know what? We're going to get ready for it. We're going to embrace it. So if it stays or when it passes, we'll just run with it because there's going to be a lot of confusion. And we yep. had huge growth that year. And El Colonial was a big part of that because yep. I was a single man shop. Yeah. And I had got stagnant because I didn't have the support. Yep. The field support. You know, I, I had to do all my enrollments myself. Yeah. All my service myself. And so when, and I had no technology, everything was paper. Yeah. So then going into Colonial, we suddenly had the system we could use. And that's, and then I realized Colonial was great with service systems. And with that, that really changed my business. I doubled business that year. Yep. Um, you know, and I've had other paradigm shifts, but you know, that voluntary enhanced benefit space has been awesome. But you know, talking about the success in training, I saw like, you know, on your Facebook this morning, I was looking at something and I, you know, you have right on the, on the front page, top banner, how many success stories do you need to hear before you build your own? Yep. And I love that. Um, and that just shows, again, that you're out there coaching and training. Yeah. Um, so tell me, I mean, following you along, um, you wrote a book during all of this. Yep. Ignorance, uh, Ignorance on Fire? Yep. Tell me about that. Yeah. So it was, uh, you know, came off of one of those where I always had, I had a bunch of people that I was out, that I was 
you know, working with and getting in business stuff. And they were always like, you, you need to write down those little heathisms or those little things or heathisms. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, because I just randomly make up words all the time. And, um, I assume other people understand what I'm saying. My wife's that's what she categorizes it, but I really, uh, it was one of those keys that as a younger person, that first person that, that kind of really walked into it all that, that I got screwed over by that I wasn't told the truth and I didn't know what it was. And, you know, all those good things that happened, right? Um, he looked the part, fancy, all those things. And then, but I didn't buy into that. Something was up and I always went off of what I, the morals and ethics and everything I was raised on instead of buying into that. And in, in today's world, the Instagram world where people rent Ferraris, take pictures of yeah. them and, and all this crap, right? Where, where it's truly just an illusion. Um, the younger people are getting bought in more and more to the slicks that really haven't done anything. I mean, I don't, I don't know about you, but you and I both know tons of people who couldn't make it selling that all of a sudden we look up six months later and they're like sales trainers and like yeah. charging people to speak at places. Yeah. And I'm like, that dude couldn't even last a month doing, he didn't even last a month doing what we did. Yep. And now he's out doing, and I'm like, oh, these poor people. And it was, um, and realizing that made in those shifts, you know, some will put ignorance on fire together as a millennial to others to kind of go, um, my, my goal and thought would be too, is that people graduating high school and college would want to give it to the kids to say, read this, because it can help just stand on your foundation of ethics. Don't let the slicks and the things you don't know about and the Instagram world of that person, that Ferrari, you know, it's probably rented and yep. they're not having that. Don't buy into it. Stick with the morals and ethics. That's the best way to go. I think morals and ethics are big in our industry. You know, we've, the insurance industry has had such a bad name for a long yeah, time. Yeah. You're crooks. You're all crooks. Yeah. And I think we've gotten away from that a little bit, but I know when I was in it, it was frustrating yeah. going out, you know, trying to sell an accident policy. Oh, they're never going to pay a claim. This is ridiculous. Yeah. And, you know, we got the label crooks, but then like you, I mean, I didn't run into too many dishonest people, but I know yeah. one big one yeah. that we ran into and I uncovered it and they were ripping off a client. Uh, this is a large union we work with and they were taking, I mean, she made probably $700,000. She was using all the information she had from policies and rewrote them under another insurance company, forged all the signatures, did everything. And she took away over half a million dollars wow. in, in three months wow. in commissions. Um, and then of course we got turned over, big thing. State came up here, talked to me, and they went after her and she moved to Colorado and started insurance again. Wow. But that's the kind of people that give a bad name to what we do. And, you know, again, lack of moral, lack of ethics. Yeah. You know, she just, she was money hungry. Yeah. And that's something, you know, even my wife and I always talk about, you know, I'll never waver from that. You know, yep. We get calls from even clients. Well, can we change that date? Can we do this? I'm like, no, it's, it yeah. is what it is. Ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. I'm not yeah. losing my career over something, you know, dishonest or that goes against the law and ethics and morals. So, yeah. Um, so talking about, you mentioned millennials and that millennial yeah. side. And I know you, you were just on David Johnson's uh, Carol D, yeah. CEO Insight. Yeah. Talking about being the youngest CEO of an insurance company, which yeah. we'll get into in a minute. But one of the things you talk about was the millennials and the insurance side of millennials. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say selling to millennials, but having them understand benefits and insurance. Talk a little bit about, because you are a millennial. Yep. I'm a Gen Xer. Yep. It's different markets, completely different markets. Yep. How, talk a little bit about that and where you're, you, how you're targeting that and how you've been targeting that. Well, the thing is millennials are easier to sell to now because they are, uh, the majority of them are in their thirties. And so, that's true. you know, when, when back in the day, that's what a, I, I will, everybody keeps, a lot of people keep tra talking about the difficultness with it. And I go, well, that was, that was more so five, six, seven years ago. Um, but millennials more than most generations understand catastrophic events and why you need to protect it when, they became of age in the world of the Great Recession, you know, that the second closest to the Depression. They're coming out of college with debt to their eyeballs and can't get jobs and in their world, right? So, I mean, millennials for the next five to eight years have been gun shy of everything. That's why the rents are up and people weren't buying houses yeah. back then. But now you see they are. And all the people who overbuilt the, um, you know, apartment complexes thinking millennials would never buy were wrong because it's not that they weren't going to buy. They just had to get far enough away from what they came into grown world with in one of the worst recessions there's ever been besides the Great Depression, right? So that's now become kind of on a back burner. Now they're buying, we see the house and market going crazy because that huge population buying. Um, I mean, you got millennials that are 40 years old now 
Yeah. You know, um, you have millennials that are 40. So they're coming into their life. They just did it later than most generations, right? That most of them started families in their 30s versus in their 20s. And and so it's all later. But now that time is hitting. So now they're looking to protect it. And it's pretty easy nowadays to really do it because they're actually in that spot in life where they know and they know very well that you need to protect it by watching and being a part of trying to get into the workforce during that great recession. Probably makes sense too, because you think about their parents are in their 60s and yep. 50s and even 70s now, and they're seeing their parents go through cancer and heart disease yep. and those kind of things. It makes it a little bit more real. I mean, I know when I was doing, I think it made me think of Aflac, I was out working with younger. I remember one of my first clients was 150 life uh, auto mechanic shop, and I'm talking to them and I'm always selling accents. They get hurt on the job a lot. Yeah. It's like perfect. And I never really pushed because they were all younger guys, you know, critical illness or, or cancer or heart attack. And we had a guy with 28 years old, thin, looked fit, and he just happened to buy a uh, heart policy. And sure enough, he had a heart attack too. And mm. he got paid on it, but and you he, and he didn't know. And he's like, well, yeah, doc said my cholesterol is high and I smoke and all these things that, you know, I didn't see. Yeah. And I would have never thought, I didn't even push that on him. Yeah. And then I realized, you know, it's, everyone's realizing it now. We're all, everyone should be looking at these things. Yes. Um, but let's kind of so talk about you know selling going to that millennial side and those the policies and those kind of things so you recently you're ceo now mm -hmm. of national family care life insurance mm -hmm. and but w more than your ceo you're actually now you're one of the owners yep which is a huge thing i mean, not, I mean you've got it you've invested in this and it's yep. your company now so talk to me about you know talk to me about the company tell us about it yeah so it's been something that i've been it's been on my vision board for four years my wife and i do vision boards every new year's uh eve instead of going out we do vision boards together we talk about our visions pe previous year and we build new ones and explain it so that we both know each other's goals and dreams coming up and that the picture of the nfc has been on my vision board for four years it's hard to find small insurance carriers and something that i could feel like i could at least close enough money realm to find and raise and get um and Sandra and Bob Irwin started it over 40 years ago. It's funny. They were, let me tell you, this is what's crazy. I didn't know this until, I didn't realize the number until then. But think about back then, think 70s. Yep. Um, a big DGA or a big RSC, right? With Aflac, one of those type mm -hmm. things. That's what Bob was in, I mean, it was the same products that we do now back then, which was much less known about, right. much much different than now, right? Like it was really an afterthought. I remember in. trying to convince people back in, when did I start in the 2000s? Right after, yeah, 2005. Yeah. And then people didn't know. This is 70s. Yeah. These products, this is, that's all he did. He literally was like a DJ RSC almost with a carrier and I can't remember the company. Um, built out a big enough, and think about how cheap the products must have been back then, right? Back then, he was doing over three and a half million dollars a year. Wow insane in the 70s that's a lot back then too. that's i mean today that's a lot yeah but back then that was like astronomical yep. numbers right new ceo took over the insurance company and obviously wanted to come meet them because they were the biggest marketing organizations for them right and come in in uh typical insurance company fashion they're making too much money so we want to change the comp on them all right yeah so you know what he did packed his bags went home Took out a million dollar loan for a shell of an insurance company. Said, I'm just going to do it myself then. Screw y'all. <laughs> Took all of his people over with him to his new insurance company. They started from scratch with a million dollar loan. And they bootstrapped it with that agency to build it to NFC um, to what it is today. And, and, and that was 1981 when they founded it. And wow. Bob passed away unexpectedly in 97. And he was the sales guy. And Sandra was the bean counter, she says. <laughs> that she's an accountant by trade. And um, together they built that company to to really big things. And when he died in 97, um, you know, being the sales guy, the thing stayed strong for a while. And then, you know, I mean, she's in her late 70s and stuff now. And she spends time at all of the things that she should be doing, enjoying her grand Cayman home and mountain home, and which is what you and I and everybody yeah. else wants to do. And um, finally built enough trust with her over the four years. You know, a lot of companies try to buy them, but they just want to strip the company and keep the assets because mm -hmm. the sales and the distribution has gotten so small. But the assets and the foundation and the financial is huge. Like it's, we're reserved more than four times more than the state says we need to be. That's awesome. Um, you know, we just need to grow again in sales. And I happen to know a little bit about that piece that we can really plug and play with. And a lot of people are 
tired of dealing with large insurance carriers and and versus you can call and actually get somebody on a phone that can actually fix that problem and mm-hmm. don't need to talk to five million other people and so um we got that kicked off in march we reached a a, a deal and i basically have got um um everything that we've got is on the line for it so it's it's all or nothing with it and so i own a, um, a minority stake in it currently and have a, a contract and plan of being able to get the rest over a 10-year period um, with her. And but I'm also stepping in as CEO to actually run all the day-to-day foundations. So now we're going to plug it into overdrive and get to growing. Well, I definitely think you can do that. I mean, looking at, again, your sales experience and the way you run a company and morals and ethics and mm-hmm. training, I mean, definitely going to go that route. What is, so let's talk a little bit about, I guess, you know, let's actually get into the company and what the products that you're doing. Yep. Well, we're going to obviously see us... Um, being able to expand into lots of things right. down the line. But um, I'm going to take this approach of less is more. I think in the insurance business, we've gotten to this whole add, and add, 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 right? That's like, oh, to make it better, let's add more to it. Yeah. When reality is a lot of it's fluff and doesn't really do, doesn't ever really happen that much and doesn't pay out much, but it can sound good. But it also just confuses consumers. Is what it does. When you add a lot, you can't. I want to be able to say, if this happens in a conversation, Bill, say, if this happens to you, this is how much you get paid. You know, the accident policies and stuff these days, you can't do that because yeah. uh, go, oh, if you break a bone, this is what you get paid. No, which bone? Oh, is that the small bone what, part or the big bone? fracture was it? Yeah, what? all of these things that you can't do. I'm going to go less is more. You know, very simple, basic, you know, a cancer policy. Pick ten thousand dollar cancer policy. You get um, internal cancer. It's ten grand. External is twenty five percent of your face value. That's simple. Yep. Not this kind of internal, that kind of internal. Just internal, external. That's a very simple thing. Everybody understands. Get a check once, and you got it. You don't have to keep filing claims over and over. Yeah, it's not going to get up to these big hundred thousand dollar payouts. Right. But we're really built around, you know, the tagline that that I've created that with our new logo and design is, we expect the unexpected for you. We want to build and have things that when, when the unexpected happens that um, we put money in your pocket to help you go. And so we're going to simplify the hospital indemnity policy, uh, a short term disability, a true short term disability that pays, um, you know, within two days type thing. Nice. Um, and an indemnity style. So you pick your payout so you know what it's going to be and, um, and and getting the policy premiums down because we're going to run leaner on the back end. Right. And so really your accident, cancer, critical illness, hospital, short term disability. Um, you know, and, and all of those things are going to be our, our core foundation. And then we, we have a small life policy right now, but it's not a, it's not a, not a huge one. Um, however, life insurance claims have kicked our butt over the last two years. (laughs) Um, and then I'll be filing for new life insurance products and stuff as we, as we go and grow, but we're keeping it really less is more. Let's dial it back to things that across a conversation, I can explain to you how you get paid, not. Uh, just file the claim, see what happens. Yeah. It'll be close to this. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, making it simple is easy because we are, you know, to a point, we always say, you know, you want to have this, you want to be, we want you to use it. Yeah. You know, yeah, we don't want the claims, but at the same time, we want you to be able to claim when it happens. Yes. And making it very simple. I like that. The best part about us, though, too, is that we're a Ferrari with a Camry engine at the moment where these other insurance companies can't be. The reason why these other insurance carriers can't be as nimble and fast where they can't plug in API yeah. connections with lots of things and they have lots of, say, billing issues, commission report issues, all of these yep. things, because there's a million different old servers and systems that work each different parts of blocks of business. And that's why those things happen because at this point, they're so big that trying to get it all under one system would be almost impossible. Yeah. Us, about three or four years ago, I helped them get a, a consultant in to help Colonial go from paper to digital back in the late nineties. And they just we just finished up where we're a hundred percent in the cloud. Everything is on one admin system that is like a Ferrari. We can plug, play, add, fast, go quicker and faster than anybody. We have no old system anymore. We have nothing. It's all in the cloud. So I'm going to be able to do API connections fast, quick, and I'm going to be able to do different specific things for people. And I'm going to give the power back to the agents. I'm in the voluntary ancillary world. It's very common that the insurance carrier is one who owns the clients and everything. It's not going to be that way with me. I'm going to give the power back to the agents and agencies where they're going to own that book and they're going to actually be able to have some to do it. I'm not going to have this crazy 10-year vesting period of all this stuff you do. I'm going to give it back to them because 
I believe you do well and treat the agencies and stuff, they're not going to want to go flip and flop and roll business of carriers that are taking care of them. They don't. They do that to the carriers that really aren't taking care of them. Yep. Well, that's what you know. Talk about systems. You know, we moved our block from Aflac yep. to Colonial because yep. of the systems that were in place and the service. You know, that was one of the headaches we had even with our clients. And I'm not trying to pick on Aflac, but even to this day, yep. you want to change a social, you want to change something. It's four pieces of paper. You have to have the employee sign it, the employer sign yep. it. It is a hassle to get anything done. You can't get anybody on the phone. You can't get things finished. And when we worked with Colonial moved over there, it was very simple and refreshing yep. to say, Oh, the social we a digit well, you wrote the digit wrong or it was put in the policy wrong. Let me call Colonial. Oh, it's all fixed. They typed yeah. in the new one. It's yeah. good to go. It was very simple to work with them. So I like that idea in the system. So putting in those systems, the, the technology, which makes it streamlined, yeah. more efficient. But also when you look at like your sales force, you're talking about your agents. Are you going after, you know, are you doing the Affleck model? We're going out and just going directly to businesses and Without the agent, are you working more with brokers, which is kind of where they tried go, and I still don't think it's very successful. Yeah. Whereas Colonial work with pretty much only brokers. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, where where do you see that going? Doing both sides of it, all of the above. All really, the above. I mean, I'm not well. I'm not going to go out doing a bunch of right now at at the time. Lots of recruiting as far as that goes. I have a, lots of agencies and stuff. People like yourself and others that I know um, that when I get the new products done and stuff, be able to. My goal is for a bunch of these, I mean, because almost in today's world, even Colonial's lingo, DJ stuff, they're almost all brokers. They almost yeah. all are doing stuff everywhere. And so I've got lots of those relationships that I'm going to show ways to make more money and have that more power on the ancillary uh, part of it all to, to be able to go after and be able to sell. And, and I really can see it as I want to be more of a boutique shop, right, um, where I can customize and make things for you, for your specific businesses, mm -hmm. right? And that's how I believe you really stay in um, strong with different brokers and different agencies. When you are truly a partner and you customize things with them and trust them, they trust you and they do it and move forward with it, right? And that's the way that I see us being able to do it and stay nimble to where we can keep commissions and everything else up and rates down some, you know? So, I mean, um, I think that I, there's a big market out there that's looking forward to that. The craziest thing, too, is that um, one of the biggest things I wanted to see was the average tenure of the employees at the home office is 26 years is the average. <laughs> average. Not like the longest, the average. And so that's so simple for me because... All I can, all I have to do really is really get the sales going because they obviously know what the heck they're doing yeah. when it comes to that. And so with us, when you've got a, um, if, if you had a commission issue, instead of it having to go through 5 million people to see what it is, you can call in and talk to Cheryl and Cheryl's going to go, got it done, fixed. You got it. She didn't have to talk to somebody else in some other state and get some other server to get it off a of process. It's no, it's fixed. Well, that was a complaint I had with other carriers was. You know, I'm the broker, I'm the agent, I'm the expert for my client. Yeah. And when you're not giving me the power to fix things for them, yep. when you're taking power away or you're not trusting me to do it. And I understand in some of those, you know, you're bringing somebody on that's never worked insurance before, didn't know the first Completely thing about different. it. And they're walking in, they don't know the first thing. Yeah, you're, you're, you're kind of putting, well, I don't want them to screw up and, and cause us lawsuits and so on. I get yep. that. But at the same time, when you're looking at us as a broker with an agency, you know, millions of dollars in business, taking that power away from us, it makes it very difficult for us to take care of our clients. Absolutely. And it reflects the client. So I like, you know, how you're saying we're going to give that power back, make it simple and easy. Yeah. Whether you realize it or not, your company and your employees are at risk. It's vital you know the hard truth about the current health insurance and healthcare system so you can discover what to do about it. The new best-selling book, Life and Death Decisions in the C-Suite, reveals how the private healthcare system and health insurance industry have plagued businesses and organizations across the U.S. for decades. The concepts and strategies you will learn from this book will be enlightening. They will help you take back control of out-of-control health insurance costs, which will result in massive savings for your company and better quality healthcare for your employees. Life and Death Decisions in the C-Suite features recognized industry veteran and founder of Ovation, Dan Lebrot, who pulls back the curtain on the tragic consequences of skyrocketing prescription costs. Specifically, Dan reveals the hidden reality behind rising drug costs and how you can take back control of those dollars with a few simple, non-disruptive changes to your health plan. The result is affordable medications for your employees and increased profitability for your company. Get your copy of Life and Death Decisions in the C-Suite now. 
So you had mentioned something about also, you know, claims, an STD claim being two days, you know, and that's, of course, you grew up in the business where yep. the claims were paid very quickly. Um, two things we always look at when we look at, you know, yeah, we look at the policy and we're looking mm -hmm. at how is it written, what are the benefits, but, and what are the rates, you know, are they competitive or lower? But claims payment is a big thing f for us. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, currently, how does that system work? at the company and do you, you see enhancing it or keeping it the same? Oh, we're definitely going to be enhancing it. I mean, now we're literally only three weeks into the brand new entire right. <laughs> backend system. We've had all three weeks, we've had people from the entire software team there because working on all the bugs. But that now, once that foundation is done, that sets us up to be able to do, because before it was all paper, it was all okay. everything. Now it's not going to be, we're going to, I mean, that can happen for the people who want to do it, but look, the the goal will be within um, within three years, which could be sooner, but it's three years is kind of a deal that I got to put together really for the whole universe, as I'm calling it, inside being done. Um, but just where you take a picture of your EOB or anything that, that shows and proves it and you can just upload it right onto the website. And then I want it to where our claims processors say, Andrea and them that been there forever. Instead of them having to look at it all, we have an algorithm built in that when that gets up, when that gets uploaded, um, it goes through these check marks and basically through the algorithm, right? And as long as it hits those check marks, it just automatically is paid to where I can foresee it being somebody taking a picture of their claim, uploading it onto our website in two hours, having deposit in their account. It sounds like my, my farmers, I mean, my yeah. insurance claim. I mean, we just uploaded everything and then claim processed and paid very quickly. Yeah. So looking at an, from an employer versus broker, so we've got two different people that are basically going to be working with you. So from an employer perspective, to work to work with you, to offer to their employees, what's like minimum size you look at, how many policies need to be written? I mean, tell a little bit about that. No, no, no restrictions. Okay. We're good for all of it. Again, we're very nimble in the ability to do so. We don't have all of the massive layers of hierarchies of everything to be paying out. Um, we're paying straight to the the people so if you're one of those that's in say that aflac world or something where it's tons of people getting paid off of you and they don't do anything we're the ones we cut all that out and give it all straight to you okay. and um and with that then we don't have to um worry about any of the other foreseen things right that you have to deal with with the large carriers so um we're we're excited and pumped about that mobility and the nimbleness, which most people are not used to hearing. Right. You know, most agents are not used to saying, oh, all the carriers are nimble, right? Um, we wanted to wear an employer. The good thing is, is have you ever had issues where you can't get um, billing fixed, right? Yep. Look, we've got our billing people and then you call and talk right to them. They can go right in and fix it for you, you know? Yeah, and that's so, fantastic. We know there's one uh, or two carriers that you can woo. not get a bill fixed to save your life. Yeah, because it's all these old servers and yeah. stuff and they can't get off of them where... Um, the money's been spent to do it now before we blow up and get super huge. Um, and it makes it harder to do to where now we're humps in the cloud. So it's great. I mean, so for an employee, it looks like it's going to be, you know, hey, I'm used to this. This will be great policies. But from the employer and broker side, streamlined, more efficient, easier yep. to get things done, which we all look for. Um, I, I mean, I really, really like that. So we talked about also, you know, we're doing working direct with employers, working direct with brokers to get to the employers, but are you going to do anything direct to consumer? Cause that's always been a, I think that's a very, uh, a space that we're very sh short in. Yeah. Well, and, and there's a lot of things too, is that I think not only direct to consumer through digital marketing and, and media and things of that nature, but also giving agents and agencies a, an ability to go direct to consumer simply uh, much simpler for themselves because I, in our world, right? The selling groups can take time. And so, but a lot of this stuff direct to consumer still requires paper and is not very simple. So we're in the middle of creating an app. So when you sign up with us and if you have agents or anything, you want to have the ability, they can have the app and I can be sitting next to you next to a, a softball game and they go, my kid broke his leg and made, you know, whatnot. And you go, well, you should have an accident policy and you can turn your phone over and within seven clicks, use Venmo, PayPal, Apple Pay, credit card and buy your policy and have the policy emailed to you and it just come out. That's awesome because I'll tell you right now, there was times in the soccer, like I've literally been yep. in that situation where we sat, like my son's playing baseball or soccer and talking about it. Yeah. And there's no way to set up a group policy within the baseball team. Yeah. And I can't write an individual accident and people wanted it. Yeah. Well, we're going to. That's and it'll be hopefully within about seven or eight clicks on your phone. That's the goal. There'll be no underwriting, it'll be yes or no questions, three to five of them. 
And if you answer yes to them, you can't get it. If you know, then you're good and it goes through and you have it policy emailed and you'll be paid commissions within 48 hours of your sale. That's awesome. And you can do that wherever you are. And so I, I believe, like I look at that as a direct to consumer for the agents to be able to do it simply and um, easy for somebody. The Venmo, Apple Pay and stuff, right? Like it's crazy that that's not something that is already being done, but nobody's using Venmo and Apple Pay for that, yep. except for um, truly just online stuff. And even the online, say Bestow and Lemonade and all that, that they're, none of them are really doing the accident, cancer, critical illness, like a short-term disability or something, right? Um, and the short-term disability policy that I'm creating is also going to have a maternity piece on it, individual, oh, nice. which most don't. They don't, yeah. Um, and it's a big selling point. And so I see our short-term disability being something that fit inside. A lot of the short-term disabilities days are like 30, 30 eliminations. Yep. Most of middle American, 30 days, they're in trouble. Yep. So we're really going to focus on a 14-day, 30, and a 60-day deal with no elimination for an accident, seven days for a sickness to try to fill those gaps and have a maternity piece on it. And so, and that can be sold individually from an app, right? So, I mean, these yeah. are... Um, we can take more of those risks because we are leaner, smaller, and we're not as gunked up with a bunch of overhead. When you can change quick too, if you see something's not working. Yes. You know, I know like we did a, one with a, a Sharon a long time ago, and we did a lot of short-term disability, and they, it was in a trucking industry. Well, they lost their ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of back problems, a lot of people quit working, and they lost, and they had to pull that product, but it took them a while, and they had to lose a lot of money, and you know, you'll be able to turn it on a dime and say, hey, you know what? This isn't working. We need to switch something, fix something. And yes. Do it with having that that nimbleness, um, I love. You know, we talk a lot in the health industry and, and in our mastermind group about you know going against the status quo and breaking the status quo. And that sounds like what you're doing yep. is really changing the way all this is delivered because it's it's not a complicated insurance. It's not yep. a complicated policy. We've made it complicated though yeah. nowadays with too many. I think it's just yeah. too many in the mix because it was it was. Really, it was at that Colonial and Aflac. And, and now was, NFM was there too. Yeah, and back then it was just. It was like an accident policy. It was like 200 bucks a day in the hospital if you were yeah. in the hospital, right? You know, that was it. Now and every carrier has some type of voluntary benefits. Four pages of a list of payouts yeah. of how it works. And it's like, if I'm at that baseball game and somebody brings it up, you cannot explain what you're, how much you would, you would yeah. get paid for an accident, which is insane to me. And that's what needs to be changed. Less is yeah. more. Well, I remember standing in front and holding up an Aflac brochure and talking to groups and in the beginning, you get this much for this and this and this and listing stuff out. And then I realized this is, I'm like, I'm out of breath. This is ridiculous. And then I'd say, look, I knew someone that broke their leg. They had these three things and they got 1200 bucks. Yes. Here's why. It, yes. And it varies. We get, we summarize and that's kind of what you're doing. Yeah. Um, what do you th see in the line of, and this is something I was thinking about when you're talking about changing things and being able to customize policies. Yep. You know, and that's one thing we don't see that in many carriers where you can take a policy and customize it. But, I, you know, we do a lot where we enhance the core benefits. Yeah. A lot of times building these policies in. So we say, hey, you know what? We're having a raise deductible. And I did this with a municipality, yep. uh, 200 employees. The insurance, the health insurance is 100 percent paid for by the city. Yeah. Employee pays nothing for dependents, anything. But because of costs and so on, they said, well, look, we don't want to make the employees pay for insurance. So we're, but we're going to take this deductible from zero. Yep. <laughs> to a thousand dollars. Now we knew there'd be some blowback, but they instead they put in of some voluntary or some supplemental benefits and they paid for it as part of the policy, but to help offset that that difference, you know, so the employees didn't get as upset. So are you gonna have policies where talking about the customization where I could say, This is my employer's health plan. I need a policy that looks like this to cover these gaps in this plan. Yeah. Well, it'll be harder to do them on just one-off groups versus more so like looking at one-off, say, brokerages or agencies. Okay. Like, you know, you come to me and say, hey, he, if I had this design plan, um, you know, and that looked just like this, I can bring X amount of business in. This is what I would want it to do and look like. And this is how much business I can bring in. I'm going to take a look at it with the actuary to see if we can do it and make it happen for you. Because we would have to be a new product filed because you can't mm -hmm. just change it that much inside of it all unless... Um, but you know, we can potentially customize a lot of those pieces that can be simple, but I'll be able to do it more. It's more so instead of a group, more so for say a brokerage or say a yeah. Dan or somebody, right? It, something policy or So I can look and say, Hey, I, I see a lot of my clients have this policy, this deductible, this co-insurance. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at fill this gaps or when we're talking to clients, we can help build a plan or 
kind of around your pro your benefits as well. Yeah. Put it together as a nice neat package. Yeah. Which we're seeing a lot more yeah. of. We're seeing like critical illness has been a really big part of a lot of health plans now. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got this is awesome. So we learned, you know, we learned a lot about where the company's going, yep. where it came from, yep. the long history, which I think adds that credibility. Absolutely. Because a lot of people, again, never heard of it. No. It's a 40 year old company. Yeah. It's right down the street. Yeah. I never knew about it. I know. I didn't. I didn't either. Um, so we learned all that. We and you work with the employers, brokers direct, um, and then you'll work on the consumer direct to consumer, which is going to be fantastic yep. when that happens. Yep. I have to get you back on and explain all of that when it's ready. Yep. So how do for brokers, employers that are looking at the voluntary space, they're looking at enhanced benefits. How do they get hold of you? Heath.oaks at nfclife.com. It's h e a t h dot o a k e s at nfclife.com. Um, obviously, I'm on LinkedIn and Instagram and all that, but emailing me is really the simplest. Okay, perfect. And so, I uh, appreciate everyone being here. Thanks, Heath, for coming yeah, in. Thanks, man. And hopefully, we'll be out of the house and see Jenny and, Absolutely. and, and your daughter. Um, but thanks, everyone, and we'll talk to you next time. Uh, here's you. a word from our sponsors. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to The Ovation Show. We'd like to give special thanks to our supporters, Craig Shelley Luxury Watches and Fine Jewelry out of Beverly Hills. Success North Dallas, where Bill Wallace is making connections for over 30 years, and Work Innovators, where they're amplifying the voice of business. And now, a special word from our title sponsor. Employers turn to TBX to provide a modern, seamless, and hassle-free self-enrollment experience for core and voluntary products aimed at educating, not selling to employees. In fact, not only can employers provide a user-friendly, mobile responsive technology solution full of dynamic communications, professional videos, and a data-driven decision support tool, they can do so at no cost to them. That's right, with TBX, there are no setup fees or PEPMs, and there's no need to replace existing technology as we can easily snap onto any existing HRIS and HCM systems. Plus, the enrollment experience is ready in just 30 to 45 days or less, and data files are properly formatted and delivered to carrier and payroll destinations quickly, securely, and accurately. We look forward to helping you accomplish what others can't, a state-of-the-art technology platform for open enrollment, new hires, and qualified life event processing that's simple to implement and maintain. A partnership that's a perfect fit. That's TBX.